Hello and welcome to Sport for Business, where we have a special guest this morning, all the way from Tokyo, Japan. Very warm welcome to Marissa Kennedy from Pundit Arena, who is out there covering it uh, for Pundit Arena and in association with our own partners in the Paralympics Alliance. Hello, Marissa. Hi, Rob. Hi from Tokyo. Thanks a million for having me. I should say good evening from Tokyo. It's, uh, it's eight o'clock at night over here now at the moment. Time becomes very elastic in this Olympic, Paralympic summer, as I'm sure you're finding on the ground over there as well. Tell me, what's the, what's the experience been like from the moment you landed? Do you feel as though you're arriving into a city which is hosting a very major event? Yeah, you do and you don't. I mean, this is my first major event to cover. Um, so I didn't really know what to expect. I didn't know what to compare it to. And um, so when we got off the plane, you know, you're a bit dazed. You've been traveling for almost 24 hours straight. And um, but as soon as you got off the plane, there are volunteers everywhere. And I mean, thousands of people um, and they're all so friendly. They're all just genuinely there to help you. And of course, there's branding everywhere. So you kind of get a sense, OK, I'm here. This is happening. But it's not till, you know, we were pretty much straight into it. We landed on Monday afternoon. Tuesday then of course is your opening ceremony and then you're straight into it on Wednesday with the events so we kind of got straight into it and um, you know you, you you get a sense of it straight away there they, you walk into the media center and there are people from all over the world and and you know you're at an international competition you're at a games this is this is top level this is as good as it's going to get and you got off to a to a flying start as well last Thursday morning, our time, Thursday evening, your time out there, when Ellen Keane won our first medal of the Games, gold in the, uh, in, the, the, uh, in, in, in the pool, a journey which has lasted 13 years. Uh, how exciting was it to actually be there in person? Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's hard to believe it when you say it's been a 13 year journey, considering she's only 26 or 27. And, um, you know, you forget that she started as a 13 year old all the way back in Beijing. Um, and so to be there when she actually managed to, to, to conquer that and, and to win the gold was a really, really special moment. And for us personally, for it to be an Allianz ambassador to win the first medal um, was a sensational moment. But, you know, from from yesterday morning, our time, and um, when she when she raced a, a personal best in the heat, we knew that, you know, something special could happen, that Ellen was in the zone and this could be a very special day for her. But she had serious, serious competition in, in Sophie Pascoe from New Zealand and the two were neck and neck. So it was hard to know what way it was going to go. Um, but Ellen said herself afterwards that, you know, everything was going right for her that day. Um, her own boyfriend, Gavin Maguire, is the coach of, of Colin Judge, who was meant to have a match at the same time. And due to circumstances, uh, he received a walkover. And so Gavin was able to be there for Ellen and just little things like that fell into place for her. And the moment she stepped out into the in, into the pool arena, you know, I, I was with uh, Derek Kenevy of uh, the communications manager for, for Paralympics Ireland and I think we were both a bit nervous. We were both at the edge of our seats. Um, and of course, then the actual race itself was sensational. You know, as a, as a neutral, it was a fantastic race to watch because herself and Sophie Pasco were neck and neck. Um, and then you, we were, the whole place was roaring and shouting by the end of it. We were up in a, the press area and I think the, pre the other press didn't know what was going on. We were roaring our heads off uh, when Ellen finished for gold. So it was fantastic to be there. And I think, honestly, I think Ellen was the calmest, a calmest Irish person in the arena. I've said it before where she was, she was so calm, so collected afterwards. And she just, you know, casually handed me over her medal to take a look at. Um, and she was her usual, you know, uh, wonderful, lovely self to, to the media and gave great time. Um, and so, you know, I'd say it hasn't fully set in for her. And um, we, of course, have to turn around and move on straight away again, such as, such as the games, you don't get to you don't get to revel in it for too long. But it was a fantastic moment, and hopefully one of many fantastic moments for Team Ireland in these games. How heavy is the medal? It's very heavy. Uh, there is a big gap between where the press are allowed to stand and where the athletes are stand. Is social distancing, of course, 
Um, so Ellen was at full stretch trying to, to pass it over to me and I was at full stretch. And as soon as she passed it to me, my arm kind of dropped with the weight of it. Um, but it was, you know, my hand was shaking. It was a tremendous moment for me, you know, to be out here covering my first games, to hear the national anthem being played, to, to watch the flag being risen. And, and then at the end of the day, to, to get a hold a medal and get a picture with a Paralympian. It, uh, it was a very special moment for me as well. What sort of angle were you watching? Because obviously when we see through television, we get all of the best angles. But I know I was there for Katie Taylor's victory and it was a completely different experience watching it live in the, in, in the London Arena as was at the time, as opposed to seeing it back on television. So where were you, where were you watching from? Yeah, so I was up in the press area. So you're up at a height, but you're looking directly sideways at it. So um, I was actually directly in line with the with the finish with the finish line, shall we say? Um, so we were probably one of the first to actually see her touch the wall. Um, but you were still it was so close that you were still glance, glancing at the screen above you to see, you know, to see that coveted number one beside Ellen's name. Um, so we we actually had a great view. I was at a little bit of a strange angle to be able to see the flags risen, unfortunately. Um, and she was a bit too far away from me to to get the the emotion of it for her when the medal was being presented. But uh, there are screens all over the the arena, so you don't really miss a second of it. And there was a good presence from her teammates, if not quite her shamrock clad mum and dad and family. But the team were uh, were there to uh, to lend their support in full as well. Yeah, yeah, we had uh, we had her teammates, you had her coaches, her doctor, all of these people. And um, you had plenty of all the um, the administrative staff from from Paralympics Ireland, and um, so it was fantastic for her to have. You know, Irish people make a lot of noise wherever we go. You know, we're always going to make ourselves heard. So there were definitely cheers for her, and and it was a fantastic moment that she you know she could share that moment, and you saw her wave. A number of times up with her teammates and you can see how much their their support has meant to her and, and how much it meant for them to have last night and uh, we, we had a team of our own out in Clontarf at her parents house uh, and on behalf of Allianz and it was fantastic just to see their reactions I've been chatting to her parents a few times over the past couple of weeks and they've been so nervous they've been living every single second with Ellen and um, so for them to have that moment unfortunately they couldn't be there and it must have been equally heartbreaking for them but they were proud as punch as obviously you would be um, and it was fantastic to see the scenes in Clontarf to see her family and her dog her, her her precious dog all dressed up and celebrating he's become a better known dog than the president's now I think at the moment you know, <laughs> I think that is he, yeah yeah he probably has a stronger it? Instagram following yeah, what's it been like for you moving around Tokyo? Because we hear the stories that the you know the virus is uh, you know is is still causing a, a degree of trouble out there. But as a, an overseas journalist out there covering the games, what have your movements been like around the city and between the venues? To be honest, I've felt incredibly safe over here, and um, obviously you're very aware of COVID, but at the same time you're practicing the same precautions you have been for the last year and a half or two years. And um, so it doesn't feel like anything is, is out of place or that anything is strange. And um, we get tested every single day. And uh, there are hand sanitizers at every single station. Everyone wears masks constantly, where, whether you're indoors or outdoors. And uh, the only restrictions really on us is that we are not allowed to take uh, public transport for the first 14 days or we're not allowed, you know, walk around or wander. We're, we're very much restricted in where we can go in terms of we can go to the media centre, we can go to the venues and we can go back to our hotels. And uh, luckily our hotel is located right beside the media centre. So we can walk the short distance. And, um, but that is the only walking you're allowed to do. You get buses uh, to and from the venues or you get a designated taxi service with a specific uh, vouchers that you have to have and you have your accreditation everywhere that allows you onto the buses and into the taxis and um, obviously again I have nothing to compare to in terms of previous games so it doesn't feel strange for me in fact I love having that structure there I know that this bus will get you here at this specific time um, and I'm not having to worry about looking up public transport or anything like that so for me it's a dream um, but honestly you know it's it's a shame not to have crowds 
at the events, but there's still a slight atmosphere. As I said, there's thousands of volunteers at this game and they do make themselves heard at the, at, as much as they're allowed to. Um, but yeah, the lack of crowds is, is the only real noticeable factor of COVID over here. Other than that, it feels really, really safe. Um, we were tested upon arrival in the, in the airport and we waited there until we got our negative results. So every step has been monitored to make sure that, you know, we're kept as safe as possible and the athletes as well, of course. It was a great start to the Games with Ellen and with Roisin Negri and we've been hitting personal bests uh, out of the park at every single opportunity. Roisin making it through to the first three finals in, in three days as a 16-year-old. So uh, Ellen has already created a legacy to follow on from her, but she ain't done yet and neither is Team Ireland. We're going out into week two and you'll be able to keep up with all of the news on Sport for Business, but also on Pundit Arena where Marissa will be reporting live from Tokyo throughout the week with Alliance for the time being at least anyway Marissa thanks very much for joining us thanks Rob for having me